Okay, the set green I found and it's sort of olivey satin green. Again, light bouncing underneath. When you observe things like these horns, it's being lit from the top here. But it doesn't mean that that will be light and that will be dark. There are all sorts of reflected lights going on, which will make that the horn look cylindrical rather than just a flat piece of shape that is white on the top and black underneath. That doesn't work. That will distinguish an OK painting and a good painting to see that subtle difference. And these things are difficult to learn when you start out. It's taken me a long time anyway. It's a lost edge there. Now do I keep that lost edge or do I define it? Let's, let's just try it. about those fish and chips. Um, I don't know whether that's better or not. Keep it for now. This is where you need to be bound by the photograph. I'm sticking pretty faithfully to the photo of the animal itself, but I'm making making up the background largely. Well wholly. And as I said way back at the start Going to say I've gone blank. What did I say back at the start? Oh yeah, don't uh, don't just paint the animal with no background or put the background in as an afterthought. It's got to be all part of the painting. Let it grow. To quote that word again, organically throughout. background is every bit as important as the subject. should never be put in as an afterthought. Oh, well, I'll just squiggle something in. It will be part of the whole. <coughs> I've not stood back for a half an hour or so, so I shall do that in a minute. I'll just take a rain check on it. It's good to stand back and look at the work and assess it. Have you set out what you wanted to achieve? A bit more red underneath there. It's not 
about that then. In a bit. You see, you sort of mix the colours on the painting. Bit of green here. Quite dark there. All these little subtle bits. I'm going to turn the camera off now and just assess the painting. <laughs> 